going on, Maglite Night Nation? We have something real interesting for you today, and it's one of the biggest conversations that I see happening all over YouTube, all over the forums and things like that, and it's about something as innocuous as one of these little guys. So today we're talking about lights, weapon-mounted lights, handheld. Everyone has opinion. Is it better to have a handheld light? Is it better to have weapon-mounted? Or is the answer somewhere in between? So I'm here with Cam and Shay. We're at Prescott Shooting Range, um, and this is... Man, this is one of the most renowned ranges when it comes to their CCW courses as well as their training. Uh, one of the only ranges that can actually do law enforcement training because of the way that they're set up and the training that they do. Um, so I thought there was no one better to ask about this topic than you two. So I'd just like to kind of kick it off and just ask a simple question um, that I see so much debate about. And that is weapon mounted versus handheld or a little bit of both. I mean, where do you, where do you come down on it? Generally, what we find is anything that's a simple question and has a simple answer <laughs> is the thing 2A guys will fight over the most, right? If it doesn't really matter, that's what we'll die on a hill for. So the answer is, should you have a handheld? Should you have a weapon mounted? Yes. You should have both. Any gun that's going to be used in a defensive role ought to have a light attached to it. It's dark half the time, and the odds are that bad stuff that's going to involve your gun being used, it's going to happen when it's dark. Yeah. But... You should also have a flashlight on you because I don't want to pull out my gun every time I drop my keys and they roll under the car, waving my gun around trying to find those keys. I carry a light on me literally every day. I don't use it every day, but at least once a week, I find a use for this and I'm glad I carry it. Here's a big thing that I see. I mean, I've seen you take shooters from, man, they can barely hit the paper to having amazing groups and it's because you guys practice the fundamentals. But part of the fundamentals, when I'm walking around this place, I see the rules of gun safety everywhere. And one of those top rules is never aim a firearm at something you're not willing to destroy. And that's what concerns me, because I've always been a guy that needs a light on my weapon. Um, part of it's just because it kind of looks cool. It's kind it of awesome. Does look and I convince myself, oh man, it actually pulls the muzzle down, reduces <laughs> recoil. This is, this is what I got to do, you know? It's like... It's the lies you tell yourself. It's a legitimate too. question. I asked the same thing. First light <laughs> class I ever took is, is this going to improve recoil? The instructor just gave me this look like, sure. You're destroying my <laughs> fantasies right now. Um, yeah, so I mean, you get them for all these reasons. But on the same note, if you hear a bump in the night and you go exploring and searching your home with that and you're illuminating something that's not a threat with a firearm, man, not only is that dangerous for you, your family, and everyone involved, but man, if you do that in an EDC scenario and you draw... Now you're brandishing a firearm, it's wanton endangerment. There's a lot of issues that come with that. Sure. So it drives me nuts when I see all these videos saying never use a weapon mounted light because I think there's absolutely a place for it. Um, but I also don't think the answer is always one or the other. You know, I really feel like there's a common middle ground that no one's talking about. And that's why I wanted to kind of open this conversation up. I mean, yeah, Shay, just on a daily basis, do you find like having a light on hand is just useful? We've got one up at the register for a million things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do carry lights when I'm out off-roading. We're out in the middle of the night all the time, uh, just like more lights on your truck are useful. Having more lights on your person or in your vehicle always comes in handy if you break down. Or I think that's a great point. Yeah, if you're hiking around and you find a bear, you're out in the bush, <laughs> you never know, right? <laughs> that's true. We get that's used right. to city lights. You know, there's lights everywhere. But yeah, if you go out in the country, even a little way out of town, man, it gets dark, dark, dark. Yeah. And yeah, if you don't have a light, it's you can't do anything. So here's one of my main questions and concerns that I hear a lot is with the weapons mounted light, you're literally holding the light and you're shooting one handed. Now, most of the data that we see, I mean, a lot of people love to show off on YouTube and show that they can hit a 180 yard shot with the subcompact. That's awesome. Looks good for YouTube and for the gram. That's not where we live. You know, most issues actually pop up within about three yards. How much accuracy does both a really trained shooter like yourself or someone who's not as well trained like me lose shooting one-handed versus having both hands in a combat grip on the gun? A simple short answer is you're half as good when you have half as many hands. It's You can get really, really good. And one of the reasons we work one-handed shooting is to improve our two-handed shooting. Right. If you improve one-handed, you're gonna find, man, I can shoot two-handed better now because I understand grip, I understand trigger press, I understand exact pressure, how much I need. That's gonna pay off. Right. So the answer is, you're always half as good as you think you are, and if you take one of those hands away, now you're a quarter as good as you think right. you are. Yeah, Cam said pretty much everything with that. I hear a common phrase saying, when you're shooting defensively, you can expect your group, your marksmanship group, to open up about three times the size. So if you have a two-inch group at 
five yards and you're shooting defensively, you can look at a six inch group at that point. And taking away a hand is even going, it's going to open up that even more as well. So getting proficient with the fundamentals, working on that trigger press, even your grip, right? Work on your grip strength as well. Get used to a gun in one hand. Sure. And it's true of anything, right? We could all shoot rifles. They're easier to use. Use a rifle if you've got one, man. Right. But we practice handguns because that's what we're going to have. Same thing with one-handed shooting. You might have to use one hand. We're not saying don't do it. We're saying you need to work hard at it because yeah. it's going to be rough. Well, here's one of the big questions. Though. So I see all these people talking about the way that they you should use a non-weapon mount of light. And then I see them, first thing they do is they're fumbling to grab the light. So one of the big questions is if I do decide I should carry a non-weapon mounted light, whether it's in conjunction with my regular weapon mounted light or alone, where would you keep it? And then number two, I would love it if you could demonstrate the proper draw stroke with it, because I'm gonna be honest, for me, I feel like I'd be fumbling a little bit, not having practiced that as much as I should. Sure. You know, nobody practices anything as much as we should. We should all dedicate our lives to it, right? But we have stuff to do. We gotta right. pick up groceries. We gotta get the kids to school. We gotta get the dog to the groomers. So none of us are practicing as much as we should be. So how much do you need to practice? Well, the answer, we're gonna try and show you. Shay doesn't shoot with lights a lot. We're basically gonna run him up the flagpole and <laughs> force him to do it and show you just what a little bit of practice can result in. That's awesome. I love it. Maglite Nation, that's going to do it for us from here at Prescott Shooting Range. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to Prescott Shooting Range for hosting us. And please remember, if you have any questions, leave them down there in the comments. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Help us get this out. And we appreciate your time. Until next time, we'll see you.